Hello, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. We are going to be discussing navigating ECTD. Just a quick disclosure, uh, this is being recorded and uh, we will be putting it on our website. If you continue your name, your uh, any questions you ask, and of course any answers uh, will be maybe visible to others after we uh, put it up. If, you're, uh, if you don't agree with this, please uh, disconnect now and you will receive an email when the training is online. <clears throat> My name is Josh Boutwell. I have, uh, I founded Aquila Solutions in 2010, and since then we've been helping uh, a large number of clients uh, both organize and publish their, their applications. We've done literally millions of pages and thousands of sequences, and uh, we specialize in those clients that are small or new, and we, we really help you to understand the regulatory requirements behind ECTD and how to actually integrate them. So this is a quick list of uh, today's uh, topics. Uh, we're going to go over what exactly is an ECTD. We'll do a little history of ICH and the CTD. Then we'll go through the general structure. I'll give you some, uh, show you how you navigate the ECTD. Then there will be some some general rules to go by, and at the end there will be time for questions and, of course, a little preview of our next Lunch and Learn. So what is ECTD? The, this is, of course, an acronym, the Electronic Common Technical Document, and it is about as generic a name as you can come up with. It's selected, that name was selected so that it doesn't interfere with any acronyms from FDA or EMA or several other companies and, and countries that help develop it. Right now, it is, ECTD is the mandatory standard for submitting electronically. You can technically in the U.S. still submit paper for a little while, however, in the uh, EU, you must submit everything electronically. And as I said, right now you can technically submit paper, but in a little over two years, you will not be able to submit paper to the FDA. This is where everything is going and you need to know how to use it. And of course, it's not simple. Just like you have uh, the technical aspects of other parts of your application, you have technical aspects of the actual assembly and submission of it. Just to you know, keep in mind, you don't want someone who just knows the guidances to write your stability studies, and you don't want someone who just knows the guidance to present everything about your application. So what is the history? Uh, the ECTD is based on, surprisingly, the CTD. And the CTD was created in order to reduce the rework necessary for submitting to different countries. You know, all these different countries have different, have, uh, different standards, but they really all ask for the same data. I mean, there's only so many ways you can prove things are safe and effective. And so all these countries, even though the order was different, the style was different, all asked for the same data. And so they got together and said, you know, we'll come up with a format that will let you submit virtually anything to, to us and we'll, you know, it'll save us time because we won't have to learn the structure of your individual application since it'll be a standardized form, and it'll save you time because you won't have to rewrite it from scratch every time you go into a new region. And so ICH, the International Committee on Harmonization, was founded to, do, to, to bring up about this sort of unification. And uh, CTD is one of the standards. There are several others that including the E3, which is clinical studies, and, and several, and multiple others. 
Uh, CTD is uh, what almost 25 years old now. It, it it was intended to be originally intended to be paper, and uh, you can still use that format for paper, and it offers a lot of benefits, but certainly over the prior format. Uh, but uh, as things were made electronic, and this is you know, in the 90s, you know, internet came up and uh, email and all that. So they realized that they needed to have a way of submitting data electronically. So they looked at the CTD format and essentially eliminated the paper table of contents and put an electronic one in its place. And this meant that the overall structure was identical to a CTD. But you now have what's called an XML backbone. And this, this XML backbone is really the critical part of an ECTD. So what's the format of a CTD? And if you've been in the industry even a little bit, you've seen this sort of, uh, this triangle. Uh, First, there's module one, and the CTD is broken into five modules. Module one is technically not part of the CTD. It is, um, it is part, uh, it is a required part, but it is defined by the, uh, the region you're going into. So the FDA has, the, has absolute control over what goes in to module one when you're submitting to the FDA. Uh, EMA has it for the EU, every region is, is unique. Then there's module two. Module two is the summary section. This is where you take the rest, the entire application and boil it down to a few hundred pages. And you've got your uh, major sections, your quality uh, summary, your QOS, quality overall summary. Then you have an overview of your non-clinical and clinical, and then you have the summaries of the non-clinical and clinical. So this is the quality, the QOS is your, uh, your full de you know, sort of summary of all your details for your manufacturing. Then the non-clinical overview is your summary of the non-clinical summary. Your clinical overview is the summary of the, non -cl of the clinical summary. And the non-clinical summary is your summary of module four, and your clinical summary is summary of module five. It's confusing now, but it actually does flow pretty well once it's uh, once everything's in place. So, module three is your quality module. This is everything you need for manufacturing, for validating your uh, your process, and for stability as well as a few other things that are you know, fairly, uh, fairly uncommon but may show up every now and then. Non-clinical study reports, uh, anything dealing with animals, uh, this, obviously this is your non-clinical data. Uh, they typic you typically present it as individual reports. Then there's your clinical study reports, and this is uh, by far the largest section of a full NDA. It, uh, each study is uh, provided in its own section, and oftentimes the studies are broken up into individual documents. So, an ECTD is a collection of PDF documents in a standard folder structure with a standard naming scheme linked with an XML backbone and locked with MD5 checksums. I will go over all of these. So when you navigate, you have your application and inside your application you have multiple sequences. Each sequence represents one submission to the FDA, one individual communication. Uh, if it were paper, it would be, you know, one FedEx shipment. You have, uh, these sequences all have a four digit folder name. This is required, you have to have four digits. 
And if you want to have all your links work, your fold, these four-digit folder names have to be in the same directory. When you go into one of these folders, this is the structure you see. You see M1 through M5, these are the five modules that we were talking about. We see a util folder, which is what the, the entire system uses to structure itself. We see the index, which is the index.xml. This is the backbone and the table of contents for your submission. And then we see this little file called index-md5.txt. This is the file that locks your submission. An MD5 is a uh, process, is technically an encryption process that gives you a, a, a number, uh, that, a string, it's uh, that uh, uniquely identifies a file. So it's very difficult, bordering on impossible, to change the contents of the index file in a way that is still useful to you without changing the index-md5.txt contents. So whenever you open this, you uh, when the FDA receives this, they check, they run the MD5 on it, and if it matches this one, then they know that either that the this file is indeed what you intend to send. Um, if the MD5 is different, then either this file, the index.xml, or the md5.txt were damaged or altered somehow, which suggests that something has been changed and they should be suspicious. So this is, when you open up a, uh, the four digit sequence folder, you should see these. At the very least, you need an M1, oops, I apologize, you need an M1, a util, an index.xml, and an index-md5.txt. These other folders may or may not be there depending on the contents of the submission. Now, if you open up the index.xml in Notepad, this is what the content actually looks like. And looking at it, it looks like a whole bunch of you know, coding that no one could possibly really read easily. Uh, and it's absolutely correct. It's not easy to read uh, like this. However, it is possible to read it like this, and computers can read it like this. So it is technically human readable. However, I really recommend you don't read it like this. There are some disadvantages, of course. It's hard to read. It's easy to corrupt. If you type anything in and hit save, your index is broken. And there's no active links. You can't click on anything and go anywhere. Advantages, none, don't do it. The next way to look at it is with your web browser, if you double click on it, you can usually open it up in a web browser and the web browser will render it into something like this. Each of everything that's blue is a link. And the way to read this is everything black is a formal ECTD structure. These are not active links. This is defined by the, the nature of ECTD. Everything that's blue or red, if it's been clicked, is a link to go to a specific document. Uh, if it's this red, you know, the, this is what's called the, uh, the operation. Uh, and this tells the FDA how to interact, how these different sequences interact with each other. It is not an active link, but it tells you what happened here. And then this green text is what's called metadata. This is data that talks about the section that's embedded in the XML itself. Uh, if you click on the US backbone, 
this is the another index for the U.S. region itself. And this gives you an idea of what sort of information is provided. There are disadvantages to the ECTD, to viewing an ECTD with a web browser. Some browsers, like Chrome, forbid it unless specifically configured. By this I mean you are technically running a, a web page off of your local computer. Uh, some spammers and, and other unsavory people have used that to infect your computer. So by default, uh, many web browsers don't allow you to open up any file on your local computer. Uh, you can get around this, it's just uh, frustrating to do so. I usually use Firefox to, to view it, but Internet Explorer typically does well, can do it as well. Uh, and then the other thing is, is you can only view one submission or one sequence at a time. Each sequence has its own index.xml and you can only view one of them, you can only open up one at a time. There are some advantages. Number one, it's free. Everyone has a web browser already. Number two, it's pre-installed. Like I said, everyone has a web browser already. And number three, it has a familiar interface. You typically already know how to, how to navigate around your web browser. Even though this, the specific appearance may be a little unusual, you, you should be able to figure it out without any real problems. And then finally, there are dedicated viewers. And this happens to be our freeware that we provide. There are several others available. In this case, you can see our software actually goes through all the sequences and creates a cumulative view of your entire application. So it shows you what happened when and what's current and what isn't. There are, of course, some disadvantages. Uh, advanced features will cost you money, and, and advanced features can mean a variety of things. Ours is very, very simple, and it's also free. Uh, there are some that are much more complex, including validation or uh, ability to integrate with different networks, things like that, and those tend to cost actually a fair amount. Um, this is a new software and you will have to learn a new interface. They shouldn't be that difficult, but still if you don't know what ECTD is or, or what it should look like, it's a little difficult to, it can be a little difficult to learn it. There are advantages, of course. You see the entire state of your application at once. If you need to know uh, what, you know, if you've lost track of when this document was last updated, you can go to your cumulative viewer and it will tell you immediately. It provides easier navigation. Uh, these things, uh, XML, uh, the index can have literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of entries and it can get very difficult to navigate the tree. Uh, a good viewer will allow you to expand and contract sections to help you navigate. It again, it assists life cycle planning. It lets you know what has happened in the past and how you need to name things and describe things to have it integrate correctly into the future. And it can be free. Uh, we offer a very bare bones free software. Uh, I know there are others for sale ranging from the re from reasonable to extraordinarily expensive. And uh, if ours doesn't work for you, look for someone else that, that does work for you. I do recommend getting a dedicated viewer if, you're, if you have any sort of app, active application. So what are the rules? Again, sequence folders must be four numbers only. If you change this, it will mess up links. It will be hard to locate. You won't be able to, to navigate between sequence as well. These, all sequence folders must have the same parent folder. Now, typically, the parent folder is the application number. 
and then all the, sequ the four number sequence folders are underneath. Re in reality, the parent folder can be named whatever you want, just has to ha contain all the sequence folders. Again, as four numbers only is the folder name. Every single ECTD must have an index.xml. It is not an ECTD without the index.xml. Technically, it is called a NIS, a non-ECTD electronic submission. The util folder must exist in the same location as the index.xml. The util folder is what tells your computer how to read the index.xml. If it's not in the right place, your computer won't know how to deal with this file. And then this is a big one. You must fully unzip a sequence before opening it. If you email a small sequence to someone, if you, you, you would zip it up and email it. If you do that, that that's perfectly fine. But uh, especially in Windows, if you double click on the zip file, it will show, make it look like you've unzipped it when you actually haven't. When you try to open a file, it will, what it's actually doing is uncompress, extracting that file from the, the zip file and storing it in a temporary directory, which of course is now completely separate and unrelated to anything else in the zip file. So the util folder is no longer next to the index.xml. If you see an error when opening your index.xml saying you can't open anything, that's why. Prob that is probably why. Go back, open up the, uh, the zip file, and copy or move the, full, uh, the entire contents onto your desktop, and then it should work fine. Now, at this time, are there any questions? If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. Uh, our next Lunch and Learn will happen on February 20th, and we're going to discuss RPS, or Regulated Product Submission. This is the next version of ECTD, and it actually has some really uh, different, significant differences between the current standard. So if, you're, if you don't know what RPS is or are worried about integrating it, you should uh, come by to our next training. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to email us at any time and, or to, to call us if you have any questions. Thank you for attending and uh, have a great weekend.